Welcome back. We are uh, hanging out here at La Condesa downstairs now. I'm Aaron Stanley with Filecoin Foundation. Uh, we're going to move along with our programming here for this morning. Um, so I'm here uh, with, with Katie and Simon from DLTX. So we're going to be kind of chatting with them, learning a bit more about what they're doing on the storage providing front in the Filecoin ecosystem, and um, kind, of, kind of diving in, learning about a bit more about their business model and their backgrounds. Um, Simon, why don't you time up, tell us a bit about DLTX and uh, give us a bit of the background and, um, you know, how did you guys get involved in Filecoin? Hey, so yeah, DLTX is a um, public company which has, which is focused on um, really the infrastructure meets protocol play. So our big game is we're looking at opportunities where we believe in the protocol, we believe it's a big opportunity, um, it's a big problem worth solving, and then we're investing in the infrastructure side of it. So obviously Filecoin is a, is a perfect opportunity for this. Um, and we want to support the ecosystem not only in the infrastructure investments, but also in identifying the ecosystem on top, uh, the applications that are ultimately going to work for customers. Um, so our background and how we got into this, um, we put together a team of engineers uh, when Testnet was going on and um, really tried to work through the economics, right? So ultimately when you're making an investment into a large uh, a large infrastructure play, you need to understand that it's going to work. You need to understand there's a need for the customers. Um, so we've been engaging with, with Blue Chips, we've been engaging with all sorts of organizations and, and understanding how Web3 is going to work for them. So Filecoin is one of our main, um, main opportunities that we're working on right now. Excellent. And, and I think DLTX is a bit unique in the sense that you're actually a publicly traded company, right? So uh, Katie, do you want to maybe explain a bit like how you guys are structured? Um, so DLTX is a publicly traded company uh, listed in Norway on the Oslo Boers Stock Exchange, which is part of Euronext, the largest exchange out of Europe. And um, that provides a unique opportunity for different enterprises, businesses, institutions, pensions, whoever it might be that's coming together to build out the Filecoin infrastructure and ecosystem w along with us. Um, it provides them the compliance and the uh, it checks all the boxes from a regulatory side because we are, um, you know, governed by the SEC out in Norway. Um, so that is beneficial from that. And um, yeah, I don't know if there's anything else there. I think, I think one to add on to that is we always talk about radical transparency, right? So one of the things that's, that's super interesting about a public company is you have to be transparent because your books are open, everything you do has to be announced. Um, you can't talk about too much of what's coming down the pipe was a challenge. But that really plays into Web3 as well, right? It plays into the ledger, plays into the concept of total transparency of what's going on on the chain. So for us, those two combinations of public company plus Web3 is really exciting. And we hope, hope to be able to translate that a little bit as well into the marketplace, because ultimately adoption of Web3 by large companies is, is kind of a little bit slower than it is by the startups, right? So if we can help to bridge that and, and be a, a trusted partner in that journey and in that educational process, then the public piece helps for us. Let's riff on that a bit more. Uh, I mean, obviously, some of your your target your target customers are like kind of larger enterprises who are who have data storage needs, and um, you know, obviously, like those are kind of the you know the slower to adopt folks uh, than more so than startups or you know scrappier smaller entities. Um, I'd love to just kind of hear you know just as a you know kind of how your conversations with some of these entities are going and and what's What's kind of, you know, how are these folks, these larger enterprises with data storage needs thinking about, you know, this kind of radical concept of decentralized storage, right? Like, is it, uh, I'd love to kind of hear, like, what's the, are there, is there excitement? Is there, is there kind of, you know, confusion? Is there hesitancy? We'd just love to kind of get some color on that. Yeah, so there's a bit of both, right? So there's obviously, um, no one wants to be the first adopter. Um, so typically what we've been looking at are organizations where, there are people within that organization who are champions of blockchain that have thought about decentralization, that understand the benefits um, and the, the opportunities that this new wave of technology provides. So typically what we've been trying to do is, is think a little bit further down the pipe. So Filecoin is on a journey as every new, new platform and protocol is. You know, the things you can do today are a fraction of the things that you can do tomorrow, a fraction of the things you can do in a year's time. So you can see working towards 
the equivalent of what they understand today is kind of with the traditional Web3 cloud type providers. Um, but the advantages there are, uh, are also pretty impactful. Like we've been talking about how you can take like, really difficult data from a, um, I guess you, what you'd say would be the most risky things. So how do you take medical data and how do you put it in a way where it can be anonymously um, have AI algorithms run against it so you can learn, so you can all pull this data for the benefit of medical advancements, right? And you can shard the data, you can split it up, you can make it super safe. Um, so I think our purpose with, with um, these organizations is to say, think about your most scary use of like Web3 storage. Yeah. And now let's work back from there. And then let's say, okay, this is the starting point. Let's start with something you feel very comfortable with, but let's have an eye on the difficult thing. And let's, let's start talking about how you would approach that now so that we can work towards it because the tools are there, the, the benefits are there. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the, the protocols and the, and, the, and the people building on top of the protocols will get there as well. And then, I mean, what do you think are kind of the, the, I mean, you guys just had a big storage provider meeting, you know, a working group yesterday, and you've kind of been meeting some of these other folks for the first time. And, and I'd just like to kind of hear, you know, just kind of collectively, um, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, asking you to speak on behalf of other storage providers here, but like, but like kind of collectively, like what, I mean, where are we in this process of this? You know, I mean, I, I think you could, you know, on one, at one hand, where you could argue, like, we're still in the pretty early days here that, you know, like, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to be taking out AWS tomorrow, you know, it's not, but like at the same time, I feel like we're, you know, just the rate that things are progressing, you know, both, both in our industry as well as kind of just in the world geopolitically and stuff, there's just this, things are just changing. People are realizing, okay, we have to kind of adjust our worldviews and our perceptions and like, you know, business as usual just isn't really going to work anymore. And, you know, I'd just like to get this kind of, you know, is there kind of a collective sense on, on the storage provider side of just like, how close are we to actually seeing this, you know, you know, become real, I guess. So pretty good. I mean, you always think about this, this adoption curve, right? It's like the 5% and then the 25% is coming. Storage is a unique world in that it is growing at like 23% CAGR, you know, year on year. It's growing itself. So you could, you could build an enormous business with Filecoin without touching anything that's on the current providers. So that's kind of the first part. The second part is what's really nice about the model is it's collaborative, right? The decentralized model means there are storage providers all over the world that all have a common goal to help each other to succeed. And that's, you know, it's that crossover between kind of capitalist meets socialist, right? Because you cannot, as a storage provider ourselves, we can't just take all of the data and put it just on our storage. We need to make copies, we need to share it, we need to, to build with the ecosystem. You have different storage providers with different capabilities. You know, we, we're in tier three data centers, you've got all of that kind of high enterprise solutions, and then you've got a lot of smaller um, people doing the same thing. But you can divide up that data and share it in different areas and have different use cases. So for me, it's great to be able to get together. We got together the storage providers, Juan was there, and we were talking through what does this journey look like together? How do we help each other? How do we break down some of these barriers? And how do we solve the problems together? And you don't get Amazon doing that with Microsoft, doing that with Google, right? So, so that for me is a, is a way to really get to innovation. You have a bit of friction, which is positive for conversation, and then you come out with solutions. And so we drive everything forward faster. I think Simon said it really well. It's with that collaborative mindset and approach that does allow you to drive things forward faster. And that's one of the unique uh, opportunities that this industry and Filecoin ecosystem provides is that ability to mind share with each other and take, okay, so if we all have a common need, we can all share our own insights and be able to uh, come out with a solution that is, okay, so this is the best practice from being able to take a little bit from everybody and then create a solution that we can then all take away individually and respectively and to keep moving and iterating faster on that, so. And one real quick build on that, like we've been looking at 
the things you need to build on top of the protocol to make things work for you know customer inter interfaces, different processes, and so just in that meeting, then you know someone says, "Hey, actually, I've been working on this piece, or I've been working on this." So you see that within the ecosystem, we don't want to build something that someone's already doing. Let's let's get behind those guys, help them achieve the perfect solution there, and then let's all adopt it. So you've got that collaborative piece as well that says we can divide and conquer on some of the core pieces of technology that it doesn't need to be one team trying to go on a linear roadmap. Yeah, I, I kind of think of it almost as uh, it's like a trade association type of model. Like we just heard from Kristen upstairs with blockchain association, but it, where it's, you know, in a trade association structure, you have a number of companies that are in the same industry and, you know, they might, you know, these are fierce competitors a lot of times, right? But there's, you know, there's, there's certain issues where you're competing and then there's, you know, a broad, a breadth of other issues like, you know, with crypto, like regulatory issues and things of that nature that kind of affect everybody equally. And there's a whole set of issues that, hey, we all can kind of agree on. That these are all common things that we all face and it makes sense to work together on these things. And there's other areas where it make, where we're, we're competing on. Um, so I just think that's really, that's, that's just really exciting how like there's, seems like we're, we're kind of in this like rising tide lifts all boats moment in the kind of the storage provider community. And um, you know, it's just really exciting to see that that you know, I saw some of the pictures and the videos of the meetup yesterday, and people were like hugging each other, and like it seemed like everyone just was like a real enthusiasm about like being able to to, to meet each other for the first time in person. And um, so anyway, so um, so stepping back like a little bit more, I, but I, I kind of want to just f focus back in on DLTX specifically, and and I think one of the things that interests me about D DLTX is like you're you know you have a very experienced team of people who have been, you know, not, not just backgrounds in storage, but backgrounds in crypto, you know, going dating back like very OG in crypto. And, you know, I mean, presumably like these are people who could be doing anything right now, including just like living on a beach somewhere with, you know, <laughs> from their, you know, Bitcoin earnings or whatever. Um, and, and I'm just, you know, I guess the question is like, why, why Filecoin? Like, you know, these, you, I mean, you could presumably be doing anything right now. Like, why, why, what about Filecoin is like, or decentralized storage more broadly is, is sort of enough to, you know, get you all off the beach, I guess, so to speak. So on, uh, on the DLTX team, uh, we have uh, the co-founder, current COO of the company is David Johnston. Uh, I've worked with David for the last few years. I myself have been in the industry. Uh, for the last five or so years full time, started one of the earlier communications agencies, worked with a number of DAOs and top projects. Um, and then David, is, he's been in the industry since 2012. Um, he really understood from an early day of what decentralization really meant. Um, and he has authored something that he calls Johnston's Law, which is anything that can be decentralized will be decentralized. Um, David also authored the white paper for decentralized applications pre-Ethereum time. Um, and also on the team, we have Jonathan Mohan. He was early Bitcoiner responsible in New York City for evangelizing Bitcoin to you know, Wall Street and a number of others um, to get that moving. Um, he also was one of the founding contributors to Ethereum. So we do have a really experienced team that can go anywhere in the ecosystem. But when we think about Web3 as a an inevitable of where this world is moving to. And then we step back and we look at, okay, so what are the foundations of Web3? And Filecoin sits squarely in that. It is a very, it, it checks a very critical box of creating the future of Web3 from a decentralized storage uh, side of things. So that is passion drives everything forward for the, the founding team of DLTX and a lot of us. And so if we can be anywhere, it's gonna be solving these issues and decentralizing the world, really.